Doug Jones isn't the one that, that wrote it. He did an interview with National Journal, and they were expressing some of his ideas, some of his views on the way that he's been voting for judicial nominees. Here's another fascinating thing in this piece. He said, the people in Alabama, voters didn't do the due diligence I did, and that was in reference to the Kavanaugh hearing. They were asking him, why is it that even though Kavanaugh had a lot of support in Alabama, you decided to vote against Kavanaugh in the last minute? And he says, well, the voters in Alabama, they didn't, they didn't do their due diligence like I did. This is one of those cases where that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because there was no evidence to look over. There, there wasn't anything really there. And so I don't understand where Jones is coming from on that perspective because he said, well, they didn't do their due diligence. Well, what else did you need to know, Doug? And the reason that he's presenting this red herring fallacy is because he's trying to distract from the fact that he didn't know any, he didn't have a reason, he didn't have any evidence. And so he's trying to push, well, there's this phantom evidence, there's this phantom information that I was privy to that nobody else was. That, well, the average Alabamian, they didn't really know that. They didn't really have access to that, and so I made the call. What information? Because it seems to me that if Doug Jones had any evidence that he should have, you know, like, come forward with that, considering we had none during that whole three- or four-week fiasco, if Doug Jones has some kind of secret store of information on Brett Kavanaugh's history in high school, you think he would have come forward with that. All of this is just to disguise the fact that he did exactly what the Democrat Party wanted, ignored what the people of Alabama wanted, and got away with it scot-free. That's the only thing that's going on here. And he doesn't have a good explanation of why he voted against Kavanaugh other than, I wanted to make the Democrats happy. That's the only explanation the man has. And he knows that that's not going to play well, so he doesn't say it. That's the reason that you're getting this kind of response. Doug Jones has nothing, and he's trying to hide the fact that he has nothing. And by the way, an interesting video has recently surfaced about Doug Jones, where he again is trying to conceal the fact that he's got nothing. Just keep your comments to a minimum, okay? Okay. Thank you. Senator, why do you think that you know better than Alabamians about uh, Trump judges? Who are you? My name is Derek. Why are you here, Derek? <coughs> Doing my job. For who? Oh, Jesus, I just ran to try and catch you out of the back door. Who are you doing a <sighs> job for? Colorado Rising Action. Who is that? Whew. Doesn't matter. I think what's most important is why you think you know better than Alabamians. You <laughs> ask a pretty dumb question. <laughs> you think it's a dumb question? All right, so there's the video of Doug Jones. He's confronted by somebody, and there's a, an event he's doing in Colorado. And the guy just asked him, why do you think that you know Alabamians? Why, why do you think you know better than Alabamians on some of these judicial appointments? So this is in reference to the things that we've just gone over, the things we've just been talking about, and some of the things that Jones has said in the past. But the important thing to, to really understand about this is, I do think that even though I don't much care for Doug Jones, he deserves a little bit of grace here, and here's why. First of all, he is ambushed. He's just walking from whatever event he was doing to his car, munching on his ice cream sandwich, which I genuinely hope, and I'm not being sarcastic here, I hope that nobody licked his ice cream sandwich. <laughs> nobody, uh, nobody licking that and putting that back in the freezer at Walmart or whatever. But, uh, you know, Doug Jones, he's not there. It's not an official press release. He, he's not there to answer questions. He's just walking to his car when a reporter comes up and starts asking him questions. So he is caught off guard a little bit. And it's understandable that he's not necessarily on top of his game when he's this is happening to him in a very unexpected way. And let's be honest, the question is worded in sort of a condescending way. And it's, it's one of those that is specifically phrased in such a way that there is no right answer. I mean, it's kind of like the, when did you stop beating your wife question? There's no good answer for that because anything that you say sounds bad, even if it's not actually bad. 
And so this is really the uh, the same kind of, of thing is that it's wor- it's worded in such a way that why do you think you know better than Alabamians on this stuff? But the reason that it's worded that way, and again, I'm not, you know, I would have worded it a little differently, honestly, less like an ambush question, but let's be honest. The reason that it's worded that way is because essentially that is what Doug Jones said. When it came to the Kavanaugh hearing, you just heard the comment that I read, and I read it verbatim. He said that when it came to that, that they didn't do the due diligence that I did. Either. In other words, I knew better than my constituents on this, and that's the reason I voted that way. Which, again, begs the question, why? The question that he's asking is a legitimate question. Okay, you've told us that you believe that you knew better than your constituents, that you believe that Kavanaugh was not fit to be a Supreme Court justice, and they obviously did. And for whether it was you were privy to some kind of special information that nobody can seem to locate, what is the rationale? What is the reason for that? Because you can't just say, I know better than the people of Alabama. Peace. See y'all later. That doesn't work. That's not an explanation. If you want to explain your vote, here's your chance. And first of all, when it comes to people that seem to be at odds with their constituents, which this happens even with really good senators, people that I consider really good senators like Rand Paul, occasionally he gets on the side of an issue that his constituents do not like. And so it's a very run-of-the-mill, honestly, pretty basic political question to ask a politician on any level. Uh, why is it that you went the other direction than the people that elected you on this one? That's a fair question. But again, Doug Jones has no good explanation for it, and that is why he offers none. But the, the whole thing, and this is the reason that it's going to be a problem for him politically, and it's also the reason that Doug Jones, because this is really the sentiment, this is, this seems to be the guy's attitude about it, and this is the way that he comes off. I mean, he essentially comes off as, how dare you country fried rubes in Alabama question my intelligence, question my judgment. I am the great Doug Jones. Worship me. (laughs) Now, is that a little over the top? I don't know, maybe. But the point is, that's how it comes off. Whether or not it's true, and I think that you could make the case that it is true, Because you look at the guy's voting record, you look at the way that he campaigned, talking about how uh, so many people are embarrassed to say that they're from Alabama, the way that he talks about the state, the way that he runs it down, and then comes up with this stuff where he's basically saying, well, I know better than the people in Alabama. I just, I do. I know better than them. Whether or not it's true, and I think it is, That is the sentiment, that is the attitude that is reflected in Doug Jones, not only in his voting record, but more importantly, in the way that he responds to it, in the way that he explains the votes that he's made. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.